So, cunter is just one of those words that we all try to avoid. Answer. Cancer. Cancer. And for the longest time, it seemed like something you only need to worry about the older you get. But in the US, since around the 1990s, the risk of getting cancer has been steadily declining in people older than 65. And that's thanks to advancements in modern science. Things like vaccinations and just an overall better understanding of the disease. But despite this, the risk of getting cancer has actually been increasing in younger people. I'm 19 years old with cancer and I start chemo today. I'm a 31 year old mom and I have brain cancer. When I was 17, doctors found cancer in my bladder. And this isn't just happening in the US. Countries all around the world are reporting the same rising rates of cancer in people less than 50. For those aged 15 to 39, the risk of getting all of these types of cancers has soared since 1990, with one study reporting that those born in 1990 have quadrupled the risk of getting rectal cancer compared to those born in the 1950. So what's fueling this rise? Should you be worried? And what can we do to prevent it? This is cancer. So I work as a medical doctor in London, but I am not a cancer specialist. So I thought it was best that I seek the advice and expertise of someone that is. It is true that the prevalence of actually many different early onset cancers is really skyrocketed. Hi, I'm Aparna Parikh. I'm a GI oncologist, which means I specialize in cancers of the gastrointestinal tract. Aparna is part of the Prospect Team, a global force investigating the rise of colorectal cancers in younger adults. I spoke with her to better understand the rising rates of early onset cancer. But first, we felt it was important to clear up any misconceptions around what cancer is. Cancer is a disease that starts when cells in your body grow and spread in an uncontrolled fashion. The human body is made up of trillions of different cells, each designed to carry out a very specific function. Ultimately, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, and organs combine to form living organisms, so you and me. When a cell grows old or becomes damaged, it will undergo a process called apoptosis. Effectively, your body forces the cell to die, which clears the way so it can be replaced by new cells. This is a natural process designed to keep you healthy. But sometimes the cell's DNA that controls its growth and death can mutate. So instead of dying, damaged or abnormal cells continue to grow and divide uncontrollably which if goes unchecked will lead to cancer. It can really start in any part of the body, can affect any organ or tissue. It's a general term for a group of diseases that we often refer to as malignancies or neoplasms or tumors. So it's thought that there are around 14 different types of cancers that are rapidly rising in young people. So cancers in the head, neck and thyroid, cancers of the reproductive and urinary systems, so that includes breast, endometrial, prostate, and kidney, and cancers of the gastrointestinal tract. The GI tract, I like to think of as a big tube, sort of from mouth to anus, and then a few organs in between. That tube includes things like your esophagus, your stomach, your intestines, your intestines finish in your rectum, and then your anal canal. Some of the accessory GI organs are things like your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder. Those are some of the cancers that I treat. So the ones specifically on the rise in young people are esophageal, bile duct, gallbladder, liver, pancreatic, stomach, and finally colorectal cancer. That's the same cancer that killed legend Chadwick Boseman at the young age of 43. We don't entirely yet understand what is driving it. There don't seem to be any big, what are called genomic differences between older people and young people. But we are starting to get some sense that there may be something in the exposures of this young population. So in other words, something about the way we live today is increasing our risk of getting cancer at an earlier age. So what could it be? Ultra processed foods, the consumer group which says they make up around 60% of our diets. A new warning on the dangers of too much sitting. If you didn't get enough sleep last night, you're not alone. Doctors recommend that teenagers get eight to 10 hours of sleep every night, but many are sleeping far less than that. There are many different factors that scientists are looking at, but they all seem to revolve around the modern day lifestyle, especially in westernized countries. The average person has become increasingly less active. The rise of remote working and office jobs has normalized a sedentary lifestyle, and the youngest in society are now spending their day glued to a screen. This decrease in physical activity paired with the modern diet high in saturated fats, ultra-processed food and sugar is fueling our modern-day obesity rates. 
And there's a huge body of evidence linking all types of cancers with both decreased physical activity and obesity. It's important to note that many of these papers are observational studies, which cannot directly prove a causal relationship. But when studies in different populations have similar results, and when a possible mechanism for a causal relationship exists, this begins to paint the picture that this is not just correlation. Drinking alcohol also significantly increases your risk of these cancers, and it's widely accepted that smoking causes cancer throughout the body. Other factors include poor sleep and environmental pollutants in the air. Ultimately, there's a whole host of exposures that have possible causal links to this increase in cancer amongst young people. In short, it seems to be all the things that cause chronic inflammation. So in terms of how inflammation may impact cancer risk is that something about more inflammatory states is causing inability of normal cells to grow properly. Now, I want to be clear here because there's a lot of misinformation about what inflammation is online. Inflammation is the body's natural response to injury, infection, or something harmful. It helps to protect and heal tissues and is a fundamental part of the immune system. If you injure your knee, it will swell up and become hot and red. This is inflammation that helps to heal your knee over time. But chronic inflammation is a prolonged ongoing response that can last for months or years. Instead of protecting the body, it begins to damage healthy tissues. It's very complicated yeah. how stress and inflammation makes the environment conducive to stimulating tumor growth, but it certainly does. I'm oversimplifying here, but those factors I mentioned earlier, so obesity, reduced physical activity, poor sleep, smoking, ultra processed food, alcohol consumption, they are all things that trigger chronic inflammation in the body, which over time damages DNA and promotes abnormal cell growth, setting the stage for cancer development. As with all of medicine, the first line of defense is prevention. And in this case, basically reducing exposure to all of the causative factors that promote chronic inflammation in the first place. Yeah, so practical measures to influence your cancer risk, I think avoiding red meats, avoiding processed foods, getting your heart rate up, getting good amount of sleep, minimizing alcohol, um, smoking, um, tobacco, um, and maintaining a healthy weight. Although BMI isn't a perfect measure, it can give a good general indication of what a healthy weight is for you. You can work out your BMI using this calculation and a normal BMI is considered to be between 18.5 and 25. Secondly, a balanced diet looks like this. Limit the red meats and processed food, avoid sugar and increase your fiber intake. Thirdly, aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. So that can be things like walking, cycling or swimming. You should also try to quit smoking and limit your alcohol consumption. The recommended amount of alcohol per week is 14 units, which is six pints of beer or seven small glasses of wine. Lastly, we should all aim for seven to eight hours of sleep per night and reduce exposure to artificial light at night by limiting screen time before bed. It's also really important that we catch cancer early. So that means recognizing the signs of cancer so you can speak to a doctor before it's too late. The UK found that nine out of 10 people who were diagnosed with bowel cancer at its earliest stage survived past 10 years, compared to only one in 10 surviving past 10 years when the cancer was detected at stage four. And similar findings were found in lung and breast cancer. So general signs and symptoms that should always raise alarms are unexplained weight loss, so losing 10 or more pounds without trying, especially if there's no change in diet or exercise. Extreme tiredness, so that's persistent exhaustion or weakness that doesn't go away even after sleeping well. A fever that keeps on coming back. Any new lumps, bumps or swellings. Night sweats. Changes in bowel habits. And in the context of colorectal cancer, blood in the stool is always important to get checked out. When it comes to your body, you know best. If you notice something that just doesn't feel quite right, then speak to your doctor. In most cases, it won't be cancer, but if it is, finding it early can make a real difference. Even if you don't have any symptoms, you can undergo screening tests to detect cancers early. Screening tests often have huge stigma associated with them, and examples include mammograms to detect breast cancer often before a lump can be felt, pap smears to detect early stage cervical cancers or precancerous changes, and colonoscopies to detect polyps or early stage colorectal cancers. Colon cancer and rectal cancers are rising at a really troubling rate. And what is amazing is that screening is trying to detect a cancer early when it's easier to treat and more likely to be cured. As a society, we should actively encourage everyone to get routine checkups with the doctor. The stigma around cancer screening often centers around either fear or misinformation, but its importance cannot be overstated. Early cancer detection saves lives. And it's amazing to see public figures like Will Smith encouraging men to undergo a colonoscopy screening test. Men have traditionally avoided this test because of the thought of a camera test up the back passage has always been taboo. 
but this should be celebrated. There is no shame in getting checked up. Screening tests save lives. So where does this all leave us? Well, in the US, since the 1990s, death from cancer has been massively declining regardless of age group, and a similar trend is being seen worldwide. So we as a society have never been better equipped to fight this war on cancer. Over the last few decades, there's been so much progress in treatment, and this momentum is a real reason for optimism. So I think we're kind of on the brink of a tremendous understanding of what's driving these cancers and understanding that will allow us to better protect it and cure more people. This video is not intended to replace a conversation with your doctor. And if you have any concerns or would like to find out what screening options are available to you, then please book a consultation with your local registered health professional. All of the resources and references that went into making this video will be left in the video description below. I hope you found this video informative and please subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about your health or just in general support the cause. You can watch a previous video I made on the hearing loss epidemic and things you can do to prevent it. Until next time and see you soon.